Coulthard, Coulthard in the wall. David Coulthard into the wall won't stop the race. They'll have to red flag this. Oh, this is terrible. Look, oh, this is quite appalling. This is the worst start for a Grand Prix that I have ever seen in the whole of my life. In my entire life, I've never seen anything like it. Get ready to discover the unforgettable race that transformed Formula One forever. The legendary Murray Walker, a giant in the world of sports commentary, was rendered speechless by the spectacle before him. Few, if any, Formula One races could ever claim to have matched the sheer level of excitement and drama of the 1998 Belgian Grand Prix. Featuring a 13-car pileup, breathtaking crashes, a literal fight in the pit lane, the intense rivalry of the Schumachers, and the first victory for one of the sport's rising stars, this race truly had it all. Qualifying immediately set the tone as something extraordinary with ideal cool and dry conditions on Saturday. The stage was dominated by a fierce battle between the two McLarens of Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard. Each time Coulthard set a faster time, Hakkinen would answer back by shaving off a few more tenths. Ultimately, Hakkinen clinched the pole position by a narrow margin of just one tenth of a second, ensuring a McLaren front row lockout with Coulthard beside him. Damon Hill also delivered an impressive qualifying performance, securing the third spot on the grid ahead of Michael Schumacher and Eddie Irvine, who were fourth and fifth respectively. Schumacher's time was particularly contentious due to a possible infraction during a yellow flag incident, but Hill managed to edge him out by a slight margin. Beyond these front runners, other drivers faced their own sets of hurdles. Jacques Villeneuve managed a commendable sixth place start, despite nearly destroying his Williams the day before. Mika Salo, however, wasn't as lucky. He crashed his arrows during qualifying and faced even more difficulties during the race. Race day proved to be a dramatic whirlwind of events, turning all expectations on their head. Despite forecasts of warm and dry weather, rain began falling early morning, catching everyone off guard like it's a rare sight for it to rain at Spa, after all. Michael Schumacher, the renowned rain master, demonstrated his prowess in the wet conditions during the warm-up, leading the pack in his Ferrari, followed by teammate Eddie Irvine, Mika Hakkinen, Giancarlo Fisichella, Ralf Schumacher, and Damon Hill. The weather remained fickle, and as the race got underway, only a handful of drivers, including Jacques Villeneuve, Jean Alessi, and notably Michael Schumacher, chose intermediate tires. Others, like Hakkinen, Coulthard, Hill, and Irvine, opted for full wet tires, opting for caution in the slippery conditions. Nevertheless, the race was anything but cautious, filled with unexpected twists and challenges. As the race began, Hakkinen had a strong start, while Coulthard faced issues getting off the line. Meanwhile, Villeneuve made a rapid ascent, challenging Hakkinen for the lead. Hill, suffering from excessive wheel spin, fell back to about seventh place from third, which allowed Michael Schumacher to move up. The front runners generally had a smooth start, but the real turmoil occurred further back. The spray from the cars created a near blinding condition, making it difficult to see the unfolding chaos. It's believed that Irvine collided with Coulthard, sending the McLaren spinning into the midfield as they approached Eau Rouge Corner, resulting in a severe crash into a concrete barrier. The sight of the car spinning across the track was harrowing as drivers behind scrambled to avoid the wreck. Barrichello, Rossi, Panis, and Salo were among those unable to join the restart due to the extensive damage to their cars. Fortunately, no drivers sustained serious injuries. It took nearly an hour to clear the debris and prepare the spare cars for a restart. Irving used Schumacher's spare Ferrari, while Coulthard took the spare McLaren. Ralph Schumacher was the only one from Jordan to navigate through the initial turmoil unscathed, smartly steering clear of the chaos. When the cars lined up for the restart, only 18 drivers were ready on the grid. During the restart, Hill capitalized on the chance to make up for his earlier mishap. This time, he nailed the start and managed to overtake both McLarens as they rounded La Source. While Hill was enjoying his moment, Hakkinen faced a severe setback. His McLaren spun 180 degrees as he exited La Source, leaving him stationary and facing the wrong direction. He could only watch in dismay as Johnny Herbert's Sauber crashed into him, ending the race for both drivers immediately and bringing out the safety car. Meanwhile, Coulthard also experienced difficulties during the first lap, losing control and ending up in the gravel trap after a clash with Alexander Wurtz's Benetton. Luckily, he was able to rejoin the race at the back of the field. With the safety car leading the pack, the top 10 lineup consisted of Hill, Michael Schumacher, Irvine, Alessi, Villeneuve, Frensen, 
Ralph Schumacher, Fisichella, Dinis, and Verstappen. No, not Max. But with the unpredictable nature of this race, it wouldn't be surprising to see anyone take the lead. After the stranded Sauber and McLaren were cleared from the track, racing resumed just two laps later. Hills Jordan, fitted with intermediate tires in anticipation of a drying track, initially showed confidence and held its ground well in the evolving conditions. He managed to maintain a slight lead of just over a second ahead of Schumacher's Ferrari during the initial intense laps. However, as the rain intensified, it became clear that the Jordan was struggling to maintain its pace. Despite the unusual sight of Hill leading by lap 7, Schumacher seized the opportunity and overtook Hill at the bus stop chicane claiming the lead. As the race unfolded, Joss Verstappen's car suffered an engine failure knocking him out of the competition on lap 8. Irvine also encountered difficulties on lap 9, damaging his front wing and barge board after missing a chicane and hitting a curb. This necessitated a lengthy pit stop to repair the damage and switch to full wet tires. On the other hand, Ralph Schumacher made a timely strategic decision on lap 11, changing from intermediates to full wets, a move that would later prove judicious. By lap 16, as the rain continued, most of the leading drivers, including Jacques Villeneuve, who was still on intermediates, pitted for full wet tires. However, Villeneuve had a mishap, sliding into the barriers just before his stop. Hill's pit stop was also less than smooth, with mechanics needing to adjust the front wing settings. By lap 17, Hill found himself caught between the Schumacher brothers. Michael was comfortably in the lead, and Ralph had moved up to third, benefiting from his earlier strategic tire change. Following them in the top positions were Alessi, Frentzen, Irvine, Dinas, and Fisichella. Coulthard, struggling with the conditions, urged for the return of the safety car, a decision that would later seem prudent. By lap 24, Ralph Schumacher had reduced his gap to teammate Damon Hill to just 10 seconds, while Michael Schumacher had widened his lead over Hill to nearly 30 seconds. On that same lap, Michael narrowly avoided a collision with Dennis. He was catching up to Coulthard to lap him, and his frustration was evident as he gestured impatiently at the McLaren blocking his path. This frustration escalated quickly. By lap 26, disaster struck when Michael's right front wheel clipped the rear of Coulthard's car while attempting to overtake. The impact caused significant damage to Michael's Ferrari, effectively ending his race despite a commanding lead. Michael was visibly enraged by the incident. Upon returning to the pits, he hurled his steering wheel at his mechanic before storming off toward the McLaren garage. He confronted Coulthard, who was still wearing his helmet, convinced that Coulthard had deliberately impeded him. The heated confrontation escalated quickly, with Schumacher accusing Coulthard of reckless behavior to the point of endangering his life. The situation grew so tense that team members from Ferrari and McLaren had to intervene to separate the two drivers. This confrontation was more akin to a dramatic movie scene, filled with intense emotions and conflict. Still fueled by anger, Michael then headed to the steward's office to file a formal protest against Coulthard. Later, Coulthard expressed his views on the incident, criticizing Michael Schumacher's actions as inappropriate for someone with his reputation and suggesting he needed help managing his anger. This episode added a significant dose of drama to the race, highlighting the intense rivalries and emotions involved in the sport. With 19 laps to go, Damon Hill was back in the lead, but the race was far from over. Despite Michael Schumacher's exit from the race, there was still a chance for a Schumacher victory through Ralf Schumacher, who demonstrated his adeptness in wet conditions. Before his brother's mishap, Ralph had cut down Hill's lead from 22 seconds to just over 10, and was further aided when the safety car was deployed due to a crash involving Giancarlo Fisichella and Shinji Nakano. This allowed Ralph to restart directly behind Hill. With the race resuming with 12 laps to go, the Jordan team glimpsed the potential for their first ever 1-2 finish, especially noteworthy in a season where they hadn't placed higher than fourth. Encouraged by his engineer, Sam Michael, Ralph quickly got into the groove on the restart and began to exert pressure on Hill in the increasingly difficult weather. As the race neared its end, Hill communicated his concerns over the radio, emphasizing the high stakes. Jordan's management was in a tough spot, weighing various factors, including Ralph's ongoing contract negotiations. Ultimately, the decision was made to implement team orders, instructing Ralph not to pass Damon. Ralph's engineer, Sam Michael, had to relay this directive multiple times. 
Ralph was visibly upset about the orders, and despite the repeated instructions, he continued to aggressively pursue the lead. It wasn't until the fourth attempt that Sam Michael's message finally got through, to which Ralph tersely responded with just two words, yes, Sam, showing his frustration with the team's decision. Despite team orders, there was a lingering doubt about whether Ralph Schumacher would comply, particularly as he was in legal proceedings with Jordan for an early release from his contract to join Williams the following season. Eddie Irvine's race also ended abruptly when his Ferrari skidded off into the gravel after clipping a curb, marking both Ferraris out of the race. Ralph adhered to the team's directives, yet there was some pressure from Alessi behind. Frensen and Denise couldn't maintain pace with the front runners, and Trulli earned a valuable point for Prost, finishing two laps behind the leaders, but still securing sixth place. The race concluded on lap 44, with Damon Hill securing a historic win for Jordan, their first ever in Formula One, and remarkably, achieving a 1-2 finish. Eddie Jordan's emotions were unmistakable, manifesting in a now iconic dance in the paddock. While Ralph Schumacher showed professionalism, his frustration was evident, especially since he had been close to his first victory. During the podium celebrations, his dissatisfaction was clear. He even went so far as to interrupt Jordan's post-race celebrations to declare that he would never again drive for Jordan, a threat he later acted on. Ralph would stand on the podium one last time for Jordan at Monza before moving to Williams, where he spent six years. Michael Schumacher's season also suffered from this race's outcome. Had he won at Spa, he would have approached the final title showdown in Suzuka with a six-point lead instead of trailing by four points. Ultimately, he lost the world title to Hekkinen in the last race. Of the 22 cars that started, only eight finished the race, with most retirements caused by collisions or other damage. Esteban Tuero was the sole driver to retire on track due to a mechanical issue fortunate not to have been involved in the day's numerous incidents. The 1998 Spa Grand Prix truly felt like a masterpiece scripted by the gods of Formula One, with its dramatic twist significantly affecting the championship race. It's unlikely we'll witness another race quite like it, especially given the FIA's current preference for caution, often opting to run only a few laps in wet conditions before calling off the race. If you found this video intriguing, you might also enjoy my analysis of the craziest moments in F1 history. I have a hunch you'll appreciate that one as well. Thanks for supporting the channel by following and liking this video.